amazing like yeah. men and women of God, amazing parents, amazing spouses. That is my goal. Not just to create like these, you know, perfect kids that look great on a pedestal. Yeah. I'm not about creating pedestal kids. Like no yeah. one is perfect. Your homeschool, let me just say this, your homeschool will not be perfect. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to this bonus episode of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. So Christy and I, we've been talking about how to homeschool and there's more I want to talk about. So I was like, ah, we're out of time. <laughs> but Christy, because she has nothing better to do but to sit and chat with me today. Yeah. And I have nothing better to do than to sit and chat with her today. We're going to keep talking about this. Um, so thank you for being back with us. Um, you guys, we are so grateful for you. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Um, we love that you're on the other side of this camera and the other side of this microphone. I wish we could sit in a big room mm -hmm. in a big circle and all just talk with each other and answer all the questions that everybody has about how to homeschool and how to parent and how to lead our kids to Jesus. Um, again, I'm going to throw this back in there because we started with this at the very beginning of the week. We started with Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the end of the matter, all has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. That's the most important thing. And so as we're talking about how to homeschool, keep that in mind. Everything you do, whether you're looking for curriculum or figuring out how to uh, just manage and schedule your day, in the process of doing that, how are you fearing God? How are you keeping his commandments? And how are you teaching your kids to do that? Because that's the most, the most, the most important thing over all things. And Christy, you said it, if, if, you know, you just have the Bible, it would be enough. And it absolutely yeah. would be enough because all that we need for life is found in God's word. Um, and I don't say that lightly. I don't say that flippantly. Um, I mean, that that is what we need for life. So um, anyway, we are back though. We're going to talk a little bit more about this. We have a few more things that I want to talk about with Christy, but before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com. Check them out for free, ctcmath.com. Okay, Christy, um, because I want to get back into this really quickly, I want to talk about um, your, you talked about a crate system um, and organization. I want to talk about organization, like how do we organize our homeschool day? Now we have set the foundation. We know why we're homeschooling. We know what our goal is. We, we know where we're going with it, right? We know what the end goal is. We talked about what our day might look like. Um, we talked about curriculum. What? What now? How do we put it all into practice? How do we organize it all and actually put it into play? All right. So how to organize your homeschool? Great question. <laughs> um, yeah. I love, um, again, like my brain works a little differently. And in, in, as far as I really was looking for ways to organize our homeschool. And that's actually when I started on YouTube. What's funny is I did this little video of like, oh, here, let me show you a few of the different systems I use in my homeschool. And it exploded. So that video is one of my most popular videos. And I introduced people a little bit to my crate system there. And I had so many questions that I decided, decided to create a homeschool organization course. Um, so my homeschool organization course, you can find that at homeschoolorganization.com. So pretty easy okay. to find. Um, but I talk through not only how to plan and prep for your year, I also help people to use, how to use different systems. And so one of my kind of featured systems is the crate system. And so... We pretty much can train you how to put all of your kids, all of your curriculum into one crate. Um, so you have one crate that has all of the curriculum for the year in that crate divided by weeks. And that's the key is that I, I, I think it's so natural for people to think because teacher planners are by day. So we talked about teacher planners right. earlier, teacher planners are by day. And I really want you to get that until it is like Monday, you're not thinking about right. daily work. I want you to think right. by week. And so that's what the crate system is designed to do. Now, what's amazing with the crate system, because you planned out your entire homeschool by week, and again, you have one crate, you have all of your kids in that one crate. Um, we color code our kids, and so like they can pull it out. But it creates independence for my kids and also creates a bite-sized look at the week. And so one of my friends um, who was using the uh, system, she was like, Christy, you've revolutionized how we homeschool because her daughter would feel so overwhelmed not yeah. knowing what was coming each day. And so mm. she was able to say she'd pull out her crate uh, or pull out her folder for the week. And she's like, this is all I have to get done, you know, for the entire week. And so 
from there, there's different systems I recommend. Sometimes I, I recommend some kids can handle just shoving your week's worth in the clipboard and they are good to go. Like they just know kind of naturally how to divide it up. That was my oldest son. He just kind of, he was fine. He could take the whole week, stick it in there. He'd do a few pages of math, do a few, so he could handle that. Other kids need your help training them how to put it into like more of a, a daily um, binder or whatever system that you want to have with them. Um, so that is um, kind of a little bit how the crate system works. And there's all kinds of okay. nuances that go along with it. Um, Cause a lot of, you know, it naturally happens. I always say it happens around week 12 and like every year I'm like, yep, week 12, week 13 is about the time that I'm like, I need to do adjusting here. Cause we've yeah. slowed down, sped up. Like we're pulling things from weeks ahead. We're, we're, you know, we're weeks, a couple weeks behind and I'm shoving things into the next week. So it kind of just creates this one spot. Um, works great for military families, works great for missionaries. Um, I've had a lot of families. I mean, I've had parents come up to me crying um, when they came and saw me one year to the next year. They're like, I was ready to throw in the towel. I was so overwhelmed. And so I really try to come at it practically because I knew what I needed as a homeschool mom. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to teach that to people. And so part yeah. of just the way that I show people again is to introduce all of these different systems and how they work together, how you can tweak it. And I have people that are so cute because they're like, I love your crease system, but I kind of changed it a little. And I'm like, that's right. awesome. <laughs> that's what you want to do. Like, right. you do what works for you. Things. And we change it up. Like sometimes I'll put my daughter's readers in there. And so like the readers are actually in there. And I can't do that when I have all five of my kids in one crate. Because it gets a little right. sweet. Um, and sometimes I will have a second crate. That's okay. Like I have the yeah. space for it. So it depends on your space. It depends on all yeah. those things. Um, and again, like you're, it's always fluctuating. So my um, second oldest, so um, my, yeah, so my second son, he, um, when he hit high school, he, um, I actually kind of, I just got one of those like file boxes and that became his like mini crate. And I created that mm -hmm. a little differently, um, because he needed to see his, not only his weekly work, but I needed a spot for him to be able to easily, cause he was working so independently. I needed a spot for him mm -hmm. to move his work. Cause we were realizing, again, you just kind of have to figure out what's working. But for him, it's like, this is work that now, um, mom needs to edit. So like any papers, math, anything that I needed to grade or edit, Right. Went in that. So then we kind of developed a system where I'm pulling things and he's pulling things. Um, and yeah, so you just kind of work on okay. things together. But the really the, the key feature for the crate is that um, you have everything in one spot and you're literally putting your mm -hmm. school on autopilot. That is the key feature of the crate and how it works yeah. so beautifully. And um, it's worked in times when I had to fly to Spain um, and for an emergency situation with a family member who um, wow. got hurt in Spain and I had to go out and be with them and uh, it helped when we had another emergency um, situation with another family. And it allowed me to be able to stay longer. It allowed me yeah. to be able to pick up and go. When I had to have surgery one time that was unexpected, my homeschool continued. You know, when yeah. I've had morning sickness, my kids could handle it, you know, <laughs> you know, when I was suddenly turning very green and couldn't do it. And again, there's, yeah. it, it's, what I love about it is that, um, you know, again, homeschooling is life. Like, I think that's what people forget mm -hmm. is that, you know, before right. I want, like, I'd rather my kids get B's, like, not that I grade, mm -hmm. like, that's a whole other topic about grading, but I'd <laughs> yeah. rather my kids not be as academically strong, but be amazing, like yeah. men and women of God, amazing parents, amazing spouses. That is my goal, not just to create like these you know, perfect kids that look great on a pedestal. Yeah. I'm not about creating pedestal kids. Like no yeah. one is perfect. Your homeschool, let me just say this, your homeschool will not be perfect. Your home, yeah. your parenting, your kids, you, no one is perfect. And that should never be what we're striving for. If yeah. you are keeping your eyes, like your verse talked about, I've never heard that verse used, by the way, for homeschooling. And I love it. Um, I have to like sneak that and put that on my little you know, my little verses that You're welcome. we love. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. <laughs> I know, and I'm blanking on the verse because we have another one that we use about how like a, um, a student will never be above its mas uh, his master, oh, Luke, but when Luke. he's fully, is it Luke? It was Luke. Luke I'm like, it's a gospel. Yes. So yeah. yes. It's Luke, Luke 640. Yeah. So good. Because yeah, when they're fully trained, they should be like the teacher. And I'm like, right. be like the master. And I'm like, 
And I don't want my kids to look like the public school, but um, <laughs> I've totally lost my train of thought of where I was. But just to know that like, it's not about creating perfect. And I think like in this day and age of Pinterest and, you know, Instagram and all of these places, like we want to put on the happy face, like look at right. my happy family. You know what? That's not what it's all about. We are called to right. love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And yeah. that is honestly, it is a hard thing to teach, but I also know that there's not really a lot of curriculum that's going to completely teach that to my kids. What there yeah. is, is my life. And that's going to speak a lot louder than anything else. So when my kids yeah. see me have to take a break and go and bless a family member and love on a family member, that's yeah. just, that's going to be what happens is that they're, yeah. they're seeing that and learning that in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's real life. It's real life uh, learning uh, because School isn't just about the academics. No. Um, the academics are important, but it's not the most important part. We talk about that all the time on the podcast, yeah. um, but it's true. It's, it is a part of homeschooling, uh, but it is not the only part and it is not the most important part about homeschooling. So um, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. And then I just want to wrap up with a couple of things. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. We are back with Christy. Um, okay, this crate system sounds amazing. Um, is this part of your, because I'm looking on your website, your mm -hmm. the Ultimate Homeschool Organization course? Yes. It's part you of the talk home, about yeah. the crate system in there? And so homeschool organization. Homeschool. Yep. Yeah, Homeschoolorganization.com. If you go there okay. or christyclover.com will also get you there. But yeah, either okay. of those will send you straight to me. And um, yeah, so the okay. crate system and all of my systems are all housed in there. And again, I was um, okay. very deliberate about how I pieced everything together. And then I have bonus right. videos to make sure I explain you know, like all the little nuances. Um, Cause it's easy to like to talk about the crate system. Like I just did and to show you how to right. like, how to plan it out, um, but then getting it to yeah. work with other systems. Cause you said you like right. checklists and I create, yeah. I help people create the simplest checklist you can ever, okay. um, ever create. In fact, um, yeah. you can put together a teacher planner, um, for, uh -huh. for well, it, it's included. In, I'm like for free right. within the course, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's included in the course and how to put together your own teacher planner. And, okay. um, it's like the simplest thing ever. And it's using the, the weekly system. Um, and okay. so, and I do want to say one thing, because we were talking about homeschool, we're talking about homeschool organization. Yeah. And, and we're talking about how we love checklists and some curriculum comes with checklists and they're mm -hmm. usually pretty darn overwhelming. And I want yeah. to introduce <laughs> one wonderful tip that everyone will love. And that is the power of the X. And that is you do not have to do everything in the curriculum. Checking yeah. it off feels great, but you are the teacher. And if your kids are getting bogged down and feel like there is too much, you know what? For history, you're probably going to cycle it through three or four times. They're going right. to pick up new nuggets here and there. They don't need to read this extra book. They don't need to do all this extra work. So sometimes you as the parent can just decide, we're going to skip this part. Harder to right. do with phonics and math. Those you, you just take a yeah. week off and just pick up where you left off. But um, don't be afraid to just cross it out and just be done. Yeah. Like we're not doing Good that stuff. this year. Oh man, I love that. Okay, so we will, we'll put links to that in the show notes. And then you have your book, um, Homeschool Basics. Mm -hmm. um, again, we've done a whole podcast episode on that. So we'll put a link to that. And that book is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. You guys, I highly recommend it because she gives more detail on all of these things in the book as well. So if you're a reader and you enjoy reading, um, then that's, that is a book for you. Um, Christy, do you have any last bit of encouragement that you can leave with our listeners? Of course. Now, <laughs> you know, um, this is what I like to compare homeschooling, choosing to homeschool. So number one, you can homeschool your kids. You can do it. Yeah. It's going to probably be way easier than you think it is because you are probably putting a ton of extra pressure on yourself. But with the new Indiana Jones movie coming out soon, and I don't know <laughs> what point this is releasing or when you're listening to this, um, but that's all the buzz right now. There's a new Indiana Jones movie coming out. And I would say that the best um, representation of what it feels like to homeschool is like in the best Indiana Jones movie, which is number three, which is <laughs> he has this moment and is like, sorry, sorry, Harrison Ford. Um, but that was the best. But there's this moment where he has to save his dad's life and he has to step out and he has to take the step of faith. And so you see him put his foot out and it looks like 
he's going to fall. Like there's this huge chasm between him and the other side. And that's what it feels like. It feels like I am going to take this step in homeschool and I'm going to fall to my death. Like it is yeah. sometimes so terrifying. Like uh, this is going to be a hot mess. And sometimes it literally takes day one, we are homeschooling. Everyone else is back in school and my yeah. kids are in my house. What am I doing? Um, so what I love about that moment in the movie is he, his foot goes out. You still think he's going to fall and die and he steps forward and there's solid ground. Mm. And then the camera pans out and you have this new angle and you see the whole time there was this very straight and it's a straight and narrow path, but it's mm. a solid path that he can get across to the other side. And that's exactly what it's like to homeschool is sometimes you have to take that step of faith just like yeah. Peter getting out of the boat, just like Indiana Jones at that chasm, there is firm foundation and that's Christ. And if, as long as you keep your eyes on Christ, you will get through your Amen. homeschool season and you will never, ever regret it. Every yeah. hard day, every tear, blood, sweat, tears, like whatever it is, there's usually not blood involved unless you're like me and you like, <laughs> like yeah, I, I'm always cutting myself. I'm like, my kids are like, mom. And I'm like, oh, oh no. no I like, usually it's bruises. I'm like, I don't know. Um, but it's so worth it. And you just have yeah. to give yourself grace along the way. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. It's not going to be perfect. So take away your perfect little, like, there's no trophy at the end of the day, yeah. but there is a crown of glory that you're going to get at the Amen. end of the day for working. And this is, I truly believe a calling as a mother, a calling as a father, yeah. um, we are called to finish strong and it is yeah. hard. It's really yeah. hard to parent your child. You are raising a human yes. being and it's yeah. a mighty calling, uh, but you can do it. And, um, and yeah. the Lord will see you through it. And he will bring people along your path too, to encourage you. Don't try to do it alone. The homeschooling does yeah. not, does not work on an Island. <laughs> I mean, unless yeah. you're in Hawaii, but there's other people on your Island. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and it's so. beautiful there. So and maybe we beautiful. should all go to Hawaii. That's right. That's right. We need to do a schoolhouse rocked Christy Clover, Hawaii retreat. I could do it. Right. I, I Let's do it. Let's do it. I that love sounds it. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Christy, thank you so much for your time this week. Thank you for your, uh, just your wisdom um, and expertise that you've shared with us. This is so much fun. We will put all things Christy Clover in the notes. It's going to be a lot, but you also have your, hopefully you've downloaded your podcast notes download. Um, we'll put that in there so you can take notes in there as well. Um, and then remember that we have lots of resources as well. We've got the movie. Um, if you are wanting to know your why and you're just wanting to debunk some of those misconceptions and negative stereotypes of homeschooling and really know why it is that we're doing what we're doing and why you should homeschool your kids as well, watch the movie Schoolhouse Rocked. And if you're homeschooling and just need encouragement and you haven't watched it, watch it. You can see it for free at schoolhouserockedmovie.com. When you put that in, of course, again, that will um, lead you to the quick start guide, the homeschool quick start guide, which will give you more details and um, just more encouragement on how to get started homeschooling and how to homeschool successfully. And then again, we've got our Homeschool Insights Daily Podcast, which will bring further encouragement to you as well. So you have all the encouragement you need. Now you just got to go do it. Um, and if there is a way that we can be praying for you, let us know. You can always send us an email at podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. We get those. We really do pray for you. We love hearing from you guys. Thank you for listening. Make sure you stay tuned to the very end so you can get a clip at what's coming up next on the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back here next week. Bye. Education is discipleship and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. Patience really is the act of agreeing with God about the timing of this situation, right? I can't stop and get frustrated with a slow child if I'm agreeing with God about the timing in which this child needs to do something. Yes, this child is not responding or not, or not producing or not um, growing as quickly, but what's my job right now? What, am I, what do they need from me in this moment? 
And, and taking our eyes off of the me and putting it on what God is doing um, helps us to have that patience that we need uh, and the persistence to be able to see it through with a much more calm attitude because now it's about God, it's not about me.